This is a stimulus update and daily news report. Let's start with the good news. The government will not be shutting down. The Senate has just passed the bill to avoid a government shutdown for now. And is the pandemic over as cases drop and rules and restrictions are taken away from cities and states? Is it all over? It all depends on one key factor. I'll give you the details on that. I'll give you the latest stimulus check articles like this. Deadline fast approaching to apply for one-time $2,000 stimulus check for individuals and $4,000 for 500,000 Americans. There's a new $500 stimulus check. I'll let you know who qualifies for that. Two new cities are giving up $500 per month guaranteed income. And supposedly there was a false fourth stimulus check announcement by President Biden in a video. I'll let you know what that video was about. And I'll give you some other important updates as well. Hope you're having a fantastic Friday. If you appreciate the fact-based, fast-paced updates, hit the like button down below, and I'm giving $200 to my subscribers. I'll talk more about that later on in the video. Let's start with the big news, the good news here. Senate passes bill to prevent government shutdown, sends it to Biden. So today, February 18th, was the deadline for the government to be funded. Otherwise, the government would shut down. They did when they weren't able to do it, but it's not really for much longer. So the Senate passed a short-term government spending bill, sending it to President Joe Biden's desk and preventing a government shutdown. The legislation will keep the government running through March 11th. So we get an extra three weeks, and then we're going to have to go through this whole drama again. So I don't know what's going on with the government. It seems like they keep delaying it later and later to fund it, and then we have all this government shutdown drama. Uh, next, is the crisis over? More COVID rules fall as CDC hints at better times ahead. Rules and restrictions are dropping from cities and states. Cases are plummeting. Take a look at this video clip explaining more. We're now starting to see real fundamental changes to the way states and cities are handling the pandemic. Not only are local leaders ditching mask rules, some are also dropping vaccine requirements. Philly just lifted its vaccine mandate for indoor dining. King County, Washington, home to Seattle, plans to do the same next month. And New York State scrapped its strict max, mask or vax policy last week. At the same time, more companies are pushing forward with reopening plans. New York City Mayor Eric Adams encouraging more CEOs to bring the workers back to the office. Now is the time for us to get back. And so I'm hoping within the next few weeks, uh, the CEOs, CEOs map out a real plan of this is when you, when you, go, when you need to come back. We can't send mixed messages. We can't keep kicking the can down the road. I cannot be any clearer. We need people back to work. You tell them, Mr. Mayor, right now nearly every available metric shows this pandemic is going in the right direction in the United States. So is that it? I mean, was Omicron the last major surge? The experts tell us it's a nearly impossible question to answer, but we've now seen how quickly new variants can emerge and spread around the world, but this time is different. This time, there's reason to be optimistic, according to a brand new report. Researchers estimate roughly three quarters of all Americans now have some degree of immunity to Omicron. CBC's Meg Terrell covers science and medicine for us. Meg, break it down, the data, how promising. Well, Sheb, it suggests that there's enough immunity that future surges could look different, and multiple experts I've run it by agree. The estimate comes from the Institute for Health Metrics and Evaluation and was first reported today by the Associated Press. It takes into account all the people who've been vaccinated, boosted, and infected with any previous variant, not just Omicron. It also accounts for waning immunity from both vaccines and infections, according to epidemiologist Dr. Ali Mokhtar. And this level of existing immunity suggests that future COVID waves should see less and less severe disease, meaning even if there are higher cases, there should be less of an impact on hospitals. And while this estimate is based on modeling, the CDC's own studies of antibodies from blood donors also support a high level of immunity in the population. CDC's most recent data suggests more than 90 percent of blood donors had antibodies from either vaccination or infection as of November. And that was before the Omicron wave even took off in the U.S. Of course, that's just blood donors, so not necessarily representative of the whole population. Still, even with these high levels of built-up immunity, that leaves millions of people still vulnerable, Dr. Mokdad tells us, either because they've never been vaccinated or infected or because either one happened long enough ago, they've lost some immunity. What are your thoughts? Do you think the pandemic is over or is COVID officially gone or almost gone or not going to be as serious? Are you ready for this to all be over and get back to our life before it? Uh, let me know your thoughts on all that down in the comments below. Next, let's get into stimulus. So deadline fast approaching to apply for one-time $2,000 stimulus check for individuals and $4,000 
$500,000 for 500,000 Americans. So this is going on in New Jersey. So around 500,000 people in the Garden State are ineligible for federal aid. So what's going on here is officials launched the Excluded New Jerseyans Fund, a $40 million package designed to provide relief to undocumented immigrants affected by the COVID pandemic. So successful single applicants are in line for a check worth up to $2,000, while families with an income of less than $55,000 can get $4,000. A deadline for applications is February 28th. Uh, so yeah, that's going on in New Jersey. And then also, here's who qualifies for the Massachusetts new $500 stimulus check. So Massachusetts residents and families who qualify will receive a $500 check, but some individuals might have earned too much to qualify. So what are the qualifications for that? Uh, so to get... Uh, so one example is Commonwealth of Massachusetts, where about half a million low-income workers are in line to receive a $500 payment as part of the ambitious $4 billion COVID relief bill signed by Charlie Barker in December. Uh, your income must be at least $12,750 to qualify and must not be above $38,280 for a single filer. A family of four would get a $500 check if their total income doesn't exceed $78,600. So if you're in Massachusetts, be on the lookout for that. Then guaranteed income offer to 150 adults in Louisville, Kentucky. So this is going to be a $500 monthly check for an entire year. Uh, this is for people aged 18 to 24 in uh, Louisville, Kentucky. Then we have another one here, new program to provide universal basic income for thousands of New York State artists. So in order to qualify for this, I guess you have to be an artist. The program would provide thousands of artists $1,000 a month for 18 months, no strings attached, and give 300 people $65,000 jobs in collaborative art jobs. So uh, applications are due for that by March 25th. If you still want to apply, if you're an artist in New York and want to get $1,000 monthly for the next 18 months. And then this video that claims to show Biden authorizing new stimulus checks is fake. New round of stimulus checks is fake. So I haven't even seen this video. I just came across this article as I do my daily stimulus check article research. Uh, let me know, have you seen an article promoting a general for stimulus check? It's so fake, I wouldn't even think it's real. Uh, take a look. I'll just show you the quick clip of what he was saying. Some people in the country will start seeing those direct deposits in their bank accounts this weekend. And payments to eligible Americans will continue throughout the course of the next several weeks. We can I mean, that was kind of weak. The accent for President Biden sounded like a Southern, more raspier accent. Didn't even sound like President Biden. Uh, but let me know, have you seen that video? Did, does it sound like Biden? It just sounds like a complete made up video, but I guess some people believe that. Uh, so yeah, there's no general fourth stimulus check. Uh, next, let's move on to what's going on with the Build Back Better. Got a quick update here as Build Back Better stalls Faith leaders call Biden said it's a moment of, for courage on climate. So nearly 100 faith leaders have called on President Biden and Senate Majority Leader Chuck Schumer to not abandon Democrats' sprawling Build Back Better agenda and its hundreds of billions of dollars to combat climate change, saying this is a moment for courage as the bill has stalled and fallen behind other legislative priorities. So when it comes to the Build Back Better... We haven't heard anything new about this in a while. They keep saying that they're not going to give up on it. It's going to pass. They're going to get Joe Manchin on board. They're going to rebrand it, rename it. We haven't seen any action. The reason why, uh, mainly the whole news cycle is around Russia and what is going on with Russia and how crazy it's getting. So the United States message to Russia, prove us wrong. If Russia doesn't invade Ukraine, then we will be relieved that Russia changed course. And supposedly the U.S. is going to meet or President Biden is going to meet with Russia Russia uh, next week if Ukraine does not get invaded by Russia. Take a look of the latest video clip right here of what's going on with the conflict. Well, Calvin, the White House warns that Russia has already selected targets as President Biden says an attack could happen very soon. The president. president Biden warns Thursday a Russian strike is imminent as the U.S. has seen no sign of de-escalation at Ukraine's border. Every indication we have is they're prepared to go into Ukraine 
attack Ukraine. In eastern Ukraine, new video of mortar fire. Picture of this uh, engagement. An engagement where three adults were hurt and 20 kids escaped unharmed after a child care center came under fire. Ukrainian National Police say Russian-backed separatists are to blame, but the pro-Russian rebels say Ukrainian forces fired on their own territory. It's not true because we can see direction. We are here, so it's our territory, and we know that we can't shoot here. This is Secretary of State Anthony Blinken addressed a UN Security Council meeting. I am here today not to start a war, but to prevent one. His remarks come as a U.S. diplomat was expelled from Moscow, followed by a written response from Russia to the White House's diplomatic proposals, saying the increasing U.S. and NATO military activity close to Russia's border is alarming, according to Russia's state media. Blinken warns the Kremlin is planning false flag operations in order to justify an attack. Could be a fabricated so-called terrorist bombing inside Russia. The invented discovery of a mass grave. A staged drone strike against civilians. And the U.S. Senate voted Thursday to support Ukraine and condemn Russia. President Putin says he has no intention of invading Ukraine and accuses the U.S. of hysteria. Pretty crazy. You would think that a kindergarten getting bombed or shelled or whatever it happened uh, is is calls for the conflict to escalate even more. But I guess they don't know who did it or maybe it's a false flag or I don't know what's going on. Uh, so Russia is still saying that the U.S. is still hyping everything up. Is the U.S. hyping everything up? It seems pretty hyped up and hysterical here, with especially with President Biden saying that it's going to happen any day. It was supposed to happen Wednesday. Uh, what are your thoughts on all this? I, I still I want to hear the other side, what Russia media is saying and what they think of it. And uh, yeah, re really interesting situation, but hopefully nobody gets hurt here. And, and that is all the news that I have for you today to hopefully brighten your day a bit. Here's my daughter Bella's tip of the day. Hi guys, I'm going to give you the five positive tips to make you start your day and make you be positive and grateful as much as you can. So first, stay happy, stay strong, and have good vibes, and do great to others when they do great to you. And also, you know this one, be nice. Be nice to others when you be nice to them. Bye. Thank you so much for watching. So my daughter Bella, she's eight years old now. She has her first kickboxing tournament this weekend. So I'm going to try to do a video tomorrow, Saturday, before she goes off uh, to, do, to do her tournament, but I'll take some video and I'll share with you. So it won't be until Sunday's video that I share that footage, but not sure if I mentioned this to you. Bella has been doing kickboxing since she was three years old. So for the past five years, she throws a great punch. She's actually really good. If you like boxing or kickbox or anything like that, she has really good form. Uh, so very impressed by her uh, with that. And also don't forget about the $200 checks. I have details to that down in the description below. And if you want to check out my latest wise boxing videos and product reviews you could click up here and I'll see you in the next video take care be safe thank you for watching